Hey, what's going on guys? It's Divine and today we are on the last day of the beta. When this video goes live, the beta will be over and hopefully you guys had a lot of fun during it. But today we're going to be taking a look at five mistakes that you should avoid early on. All right, so for tip number one to avoid making a mistake of, and that's going to be gathering the free town goodies from each town that you visit. Now, the well and the cow and also the honey all have a one hour cooldown. And then you have the faction supply cart. So if your faction owns the territory you're in, you do have the ability to get the faction supply cart. But please note that this does have a 24 hour cooldown on it. So it does take a little while before you can get another one. And um, as for the other three, though, as you're going in and out of all these towns, I would always recommend you guys uh, make sure that you have them if they're up and just go grab that milk, the honey, the water. And even if you don't want the weight on you as you're carrying it through, just throw it in the storage shed of the town you're, you're in. And that way you have it in the future if you do need it. So that's probably the first big mistake that a lot of people don't realize that they should be doing. Um, and these materials can add up really quick and help you out questing as well. All right, so for tip number two, guys, it's going to be how to get constant crits on enemies. So first off, we're going to start with a ranged weapon. Now, if we shoot in the body, we'll probably crit every once in a while. But if you want a consistent critical hit, all you have to do is get headshots each and every time. Now, I know that's harder said than done, but there are some enemies that you can actually just slowly back up as you constantly shoot them in the head. Um, that's kind of how I play with the bow but any other ranged weapon also has the same effect with headshots always being criticals. Now, um, we're going to move into the melee here in just a second, but just note that um, with the melee, a backstab is always a crit, and this does not work with ranged weapons. You have to hit them in the head. So let's switch over to a ranged weapon here, um, and then we're going to actually just probably come up front. Um, and we just see a simple attack here and then every once in a while we're probably going to get a critical hit. Now, if we move on to the back side of this uh, dummy here, we can see that every single hit that we do is going to be a critical. So these are just early on tips, guys, um, that you should know about, especially these critical ones. It was something I wasn't aware of in alpha and learned during the closed beta. So I thought I would help you guys know about this too. All right, so for tip number three, we're over here in Monarch's Bluff. And this mistake that I see a lot of people make is just purchasing a house just to have a house. Now, this is perfectly fine in the beta because you just want to have a house just to see what they're like and just to be able to use that cheap uh, teleport. But one thing that people don't take into consideration is actually a couple different things people don't take into consideration is uh, the first house that you do purchase is 50% off. Now we can go in and see this house. It's currently 20,000 because I've already purchased one house so far, but if this were a brand new character, we would see this at 10,000. And then we would also see the property tax cut in half. Now, one thing to note with this property tax is sure it's cut in half, for one week so after that week you will have to pay the higher property tax the full rate as you will um, so this is another mistake that people make they don't realize these property taxes are cut in half only for the first week that you pay them so just kind of be aware of that as well and then another thing that people don't take into consideration is the location of your house now um, we can see that one was 20,000, this one's 15,000, but they're roughly in the same area. And honestly, guys, this area is not too bad. You have the trading post right there. You can go up there for the faction, uh, the town board. Um, you have the inn right here. Like, it's pretty central in inside the town. So kind of beware of where your house is going to be because if you're teleporting here with, you know, say a lot of different materials on you or something like that and you want to go straight to crafting, well, maybe this isn't the area you want to be in. Maybe you want to be over by where you're going to craft those materials more often. So these are just a couple things that you guys need to think through before you make your first home purchase. 
All right, so taking a look at tip number four, where we're going to be looking at the town project board. Now we're going to go over a couple different missions that I feel like you should avoid if you don't have the materials right on hand. And that's going to be first is going to be these cooking missions. Now you're going to get some that are going to be like light travel rations or just regular travel rations. Those are easy enough to get and I would recommend you actually do those missions. But when your town project board does start to level up, you're going to start getting these which require astronomical amounts of herbs or special uh, ingredients and things like that. And most times it's not worth the hassle because you'll be all over the world trying to find these recipes to actually make the item for that amount of XP when you probably should just cancel the mission and hope for another one uh, when the missions do refresh. Now a couple other ones that you should watch out for are these uh, fish fillets. Now if you do do some fishing, Getting fish fillets is not the hardest thing, but when you're getting that many, it is very time consuming. And then two other ones that I want to make note of are the salmon. Now, these are extremely uh, time consuming. I think to get about like five to ten salmon takes almost like three to four hours um, from what I've seen other people do. And um, they've tested it and all that. And then the last one is going to be avoiding the sheep and goats. Now, if you know where to go for these sheep and goats, they can be a viable quest. But a lot of people are just going to sit there confused and have the time waste too much time looking for one or two goats or one or two sheep. And it's really just better to cancel the mission and hope for something better. So those are just kind of my quick takes on the town project. We will be doing a more in-depth guide on you know, what are the best missions and uh, which ones you should avoid, but that's just kind of my initial impression on these town projects. All right, so for tip number five, we're gonna be taking a look at the trading posts. And there's just a few things I wanna mention here about the trading posts. And the first thing is, please note that the trading post is territory specific. So that means the trading post in Everfall is going to be different than Monarch's Bluff and it's going to be different than First Light. But we'll go ahead and open the trading post and then we'll go into say maybe shields and yeah so we're in everfall currently we can see shields are you know trading for around five gold um and then some down here are a little bit higher at 25 30 40 but if we're shopping for something particular and we're like mm, this seems a little bit high for me we can actually go to this top right corner here and say we want to look at a different town to see if maybe their prices are just a little bit more reasonable. So we'll open up Windsward here and turn off Everfall so we only see Windsward. And we can see in that town, shields are astronomically priced. Um, they're selling for 100 gold. So you can actually use this to help you buy items. And you can also use this to help you sell items. So you do have to go to those locations to sell your items. But... If you're early on trying to make some killer money, especially like the first couple days that the game's open, you can be selling iron weapons, uh, actually not weapons, iron tools in maybe like Windsward or First Light for like 300 to 400 gold, whereas maybe in Everfall, they're probably only going to be about 100 gold just because iron's so easy to mine in certain areas. And also people like to flock to um, like I would say Everfall and Windsward are going to be the two biggest trading towns. So you might be able to use that to your advantage to sell at a higher price, especially early on. So that's just one other mistake that people do make. And I wanted to show you guys how to avoid that. All right, so that was the five mistakes that I feel like you guys should avoid. But there are a couple other honorary mentions that I do want to talk about. And the first is going to be making tools in the beginning right after the tutorial island while you're on the beach. Now, the reason I say you should make all four tools is they only take one flint and one green wood each to create, which flint is very abundant on that beach. Let me tell you guys, even with the amount of people that are going to be logging in, there's going to be flint everywhere and also bushes. Green wood's simple enough to get. Now, the reason that you want to get these tools early on is either while you're doing the quests along the island, uh, along the beach, I should say, um, you may run into things like 
uh, herbs, um, trees if you do want to try to cut down any, and then also iron ore, which is a big one. A lot of people aren't going to make these tools early on, and especially if there's an iron ore deposit like right there. I know there's one in Everfall uh, right on the starting beach that does spawn, and no one usually has a pickaxe to actually mine it. So that is a great way to uh, get some early on iron ore. All right, and then for the second honorary mention, it's going to be using different weapons and changing your abilities prior to being level 20. It's free to respect your abilities or your attributes up until level 20, so just keep doing it until you find weapons that actually work for you. Too many times I see people just pick up like the initial weapon and they're like, this is the weapon I'm going with. And then they get a second weapon and they feel that those are the two weapons they have. They have slight levels into them. So they're just like, I don't want to level anything else. And by all means, guys, change it up and just see what works best for your play style. All right, so that's all I have for you guys today. That is the five mistakes that I feel like you should avoid early on. Now, I will probably be doing a follow-up video of things you should worry about at a higher levels, but I kind of wanted to throw this one out early on because everyone's going to be starting from scratch in the upcoming couple of weeks. So if you like this video, feel free to give me a like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.